North. Hi. Oh, hey. How you doing? Oh, good. How are you doing? Good. We had a call about a disturbance here. There's no disturbance here. I'm not here. We're just talking. No, he had his window down. We've been talking. We had some house stuff to talk about and stuff, and we're just talking. He's just keeping warm, I reckon. We were just talking, and he ain't even. We ain't have. We don't have any issue. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm investigating a, a potential crime. Okay. There's an oh, for crying out loud. Okay. Now you're exaggerating. I need you to settle down. There's no. Based on the information you know I, I got. Can talk, based on the information not, I was given. You're not in power over okay. anybody. I'm, I'm about to put you in handcuffs if no, you don't you're stop. No, not put me in handcuffs. Yes, I am. No, you're not. So, so I need to speak to people oh. separately when it's, an, when it's a domestic violence There's, possible oh, issue. Okay, I'm going. Stop. Stop. You're under you arrest. Okay, you're under no, arrest. No, I'm not. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Stop it. You're your Put your hands behind your back. No, things got a little out of hand, so. Um. And welcome back to the Civil Rights Lawyer Channel, where we not only go over these police videos, but we also discuss the underlying constitutional law. Now, this is brand new footage that came out from a 2020 incident where there was a $1 million lawsuit that was filed by the lady that you see here, 64-year-old Greta Jensen. And an internal investigation by the Bountiful Police Department found that this police officer, John Jobert, did in fact use excessive force while arresting this lady. In fact, he broke her jaw. But the police officer disagrees. Take a look at the footage, then we can discuss the law. But real quick, an ad for our sponsor. And yes, I did do that video yesterday and had my beard trimmed today. So you're gonna go back in time real quick and then pop back to my current beard. But first, you may be surprised to know how much of your private information is being collected and traded online. Being a content creator and a lawyer makes privacy ever more important to me, which is why my sponsor is, again today, Incogni. Incogni not only tracks down the data brokers that have your information, but they also have that information and private data removed. Since I started my subscription last year, Incogni has located my private information with 155 different data brokers. And to date, they've had that data deleted with 118 of these data brokers with 37 others still in progress. This would be a difficult and lengthy process to attempt, even with my experience and legal expertise. This is why I'm using Incogni myself as well as recommending it to my viewers. Seriously, you just said it and forget it. Incogni does the work for you. It's important to me to help keep your information safe, so check out Incogni using the link below or go to incogni.com civil to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan just for my viewers. Again, check out Incogni using the link below or go to incogni.com civil to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Now let's get back to the video. Bountiful, two golf ten. We're going to be on two hundred east, about six hundred north. Hi. Oh, hey. How you doing? Oh, good. How are you doing? Good. We had a call about a disturbance here. Police received a call from a landlord after Jensen, the ex-wife of a tenant, appeared to be yelling at the tenant and standing outside his car so that he couldn't leave. Officer Joe Bear arrived at the house around 4 p.m. He later testified in a deposition. As I approached him, I remember I could hear Greta pretty loud, sounded upset. He said she had been standing at the driver's door of her ex-husband's car, who had his window rolled up, and that the situation was corroborating exactly what I was told by dispatch. Body camera footage shows the officer sending the ex-husband into his house to separate the two, and then he began to question Greta Jensen. Jobert said in a deposition that he asked basic questions and was met with, with just an unusual amount of resistance that was puzzling to me. He said, I tried to explain as best as I could why I was doing what I was doing and trying to de-escalate things but everything I tried didn't seem effective. There's no disturbance here. I'm not here. We're just talking. Okay. Well, it looks we like you're... Yelled, we haven't yelled or nothing. <clears throat> looks like you're trying to talk to someone that doesn't want to talk. No, he has his window down. We've been talking. We had some house stuff to talk about and stuff, and we're just talking. He's just keeping warm, I reckon. I don't know. I didn't ask him to get out. So. Well, his, his window was rolled up. That's weird. Well, well, you weren't here the whole time his window wasn't rolled up. <laughs> He rolled it up when he turned on his heater. But She's we leaving talking. and I'm, I'm going. Yeah. We're not, there's no disturbance. Somebody lied to you. I would get them for false, um, false, <laughs> or false reporting because we hadn't had any disturbance. 
Okay. Not that I know of. So are you doing okay? All good. I'm good. Good. Yeah. I'm just going yeah, in and she's leaving. So. Yeah, we were just talking about some stuff. Is there some? Was there somebody else here? Because I'm confused now. I am too. We didn't hear anything. Well, Nobody yelled. Maybe she was yelling through my window or something. No, I, I was not yelling. Talking yet. loud. Excuse me. No, I was talking just like that. I wasn't talking loud. What's your name? Monty. No, we haven't How talked. I talked like this. Are you? Are you guys ex? Uh huh. Yeah. Ex wife. Okay. So we still have some. Stuff. Who's the landlord? Jeremy. Do you, any well, idea why he'd be calling? Maybe she was yelling through the no, window. No, but maybe they. I don't know. Monty, I was not yelling. And well, you know I had the it. window closed. Maybe. No, yeah. I was talking. This is as loud as I talk. So you can call that loud. And maybe, maybe tell him. How far out We were just talking, and he ain't even. We have. We don't have any issue. We were just talking about. Can I just talk to you inside later, in just sure. a sec? Sure. Excellent. Thanks. Sure. Okay. No, we, I was just leaving. We were just talking. That's all we were doing. We're not arguing. You're not mad. Okay. Nothing. Can you take your hands out of your pockets for me? Yeah. Well. You're cold. <laughs> Can you just keep them out of your pockets, please? Uh, no, I don't have, you don't feel, I don't have can anything you, in my pockets. Well, don't you, be silly. Why don't you settle down a little bit, okay? It's something I do for my safety. If somebody comes up and harassing you, you would get a little, like, why are you harassing me? I didn't do nothing wrong. So Who's I, harassing you? It feels like harassment. I'm so, just asking you what's going on. I need okay. you to stay here. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm investigating a, a potential crime, okay? There's an no, oh, for crying out loud. Okay. Now you're exaggerating. I need you to settle down. There's no. Based on the information you know I, I got. I can talk. Based on the information not, I was given. You're not in power over okay. anybody. I'm, I'm about to put you in handcuffs if no, you don't stop. No, you're not put me in handcuffs. Yes, I am. No, you're not. So let me tell you I've what the call was. I've done nothing wrong. I've done nothing Let me wrong. tell you what the report was. I don't care what the report was. He just told you we weren't doing anything. And we are the two people involved. Nah, normal speed's fine. So. So we got a call that um, you were being disorderly out in front of the house. Um, That's a lie. That you were shouting at him. No, no shouting. And that you were not letting him get out of the car. Never, never did. I was just standing there talking. We were just talking. He never said, move. I'm going to get out of the car. He had the heater on. He turned it off. He started the car back, and we were just talking. Okay. And I was leaving. We were, we were, we were about, I gave him a piece of mail that came to okay. the house that he needed. And then we started talking about, we got to sell the house. And we were talking about pricing and just different things. Okay. We weren't arguing at all. There was no well, argument. Can you understand how it would look to me when I come walking up here and his windows rolled up and you're being kind of loud? You know what? I wasn't being kind of loud. That's a lie. You can say it all you want. Don't make it true. Your opinion okay. doesn't make facts true. So I What's your name? Greta. What's your last name? Same as his. What's your date of birth? Okay. There is no nothing. Go get whoever said that. Well, that's what I'm, Monty I'm going just, to. You know what? Me and Monty. Can you, can you just listen, stand still, please? Me, don't tell me how to move. I You're just, not God. I just get asked you to please stand still. I asked you to quit bossing me around. I'm, I'm not doing nothing wrong. I asked you. I'm not bossing. You know what you're doing, sir. You I know what you're doing. You, to stand you still, know please. what you're doing. Stop. Will you Your please? Ego is out of control. I just said, stop. please. Will you please I'm just settle down? I'm not doing anything wrong. We were having a perfectly you know fine conversation. Yeah. Me and Monty, are we the. Did he tell you there was no problem? Did I tell you no problem? Well, people. And we, are the, I, we didn't see yeah. anybody. So I need to speak to people so. separately when it's, a, when it's a domestic violence There's, possible oh, issue. Okay, I'm going. Stop. So at some point, Jensen begins to attempt to walk away. Joe Bear tells her to stop and he grabs her arms to make an arrest. Stop. Stop! You're under you arrest. Okay, you're under no, arrest. No, I'm not. Put don't. your hands behind your back. Don't Put your hands stop behind it. Your you're, you're Put your hands behind your back. You are under stop arrest. It. I'm not doing that. Put nothing. your hands behind your back. Stop I'm resisting. Ow, you hurt. Stop I'm resisting. Not. I'm not. The woman then resists, yelling, "Please stop! Please don't make this something it's not." She continues to ask Jobert to stop as she's being pinned to a wall. I'm not doing nothing. Stop resisting. I'm not doing nothing. Stop, stop resisting. Just stop right stop now. Stop resisting. Okay, I Put am. your hands behind your back. I am. Stop right now. Put your right hands now. behind your back. Stop right now. Stop. Yes, expedite you're now. Out. No, you're lying. Put your hands behind your back. No, Put your I'm hands not. behind your back. I didn't do nothing, sir. Put your other hand behind Please your back. Please stop. Please Put don't make hand. this something it's not. Put your My, hand behind your back. I had shoulder back. surgery. Will you stop? Put your other hand behind no, your back then. I didn't do nothing. Put your other hand behind your back. She says that she had shoulder surgery. They both fall to the ground, and Joe Bear says, 
put your hands behind your expletive back before appearing to punch her in the face. Yeah, stop, just stop right now. Stop. Behind you. You are harassing me. Please stop. Put your hand behind your back. I'm not doing nothing. I don't have a weapon. Put your hand behind your back. I'm not doing nothing wrong. Put your hand behind Ow, your back. Oh, you hit my head. Please put stop. Put your hand behind I'm your back. I'm not doing nothing put wrong. Put your hand behind your back. <laughs> Put your I hand didn't do behind it. your back. Hey, put your hand you know behind what? your I back. Didn't do it. Put your hand Ow! behind your back. Ow! Ow! That hurts! Put your hand behind Ow! your back. He's hit stop, me! Stop, stop, stop. He hit me! On your back. He's hit You're me! The lawsuit that was filed says that Jobert slammed Miss Jensen into a concrete driveway three separate times and punched her in the face. Another officer then jumps in to take over the arrest while Jensen yells, He hit me in the face, I didn't do nothing, and he busted my jaw. He Roll just over. hit me in the Roll face! Over. Put your hands over. I didn't do nothing! Roll I over. didn't do nothing! I did nothing! He hit me in the okay. face! Okay. He hit stop. me in the stop. face! Stop! He hit me in the face, please! Okay. Stop. All I did was walk off! That's all I did! Yeah. That's all I did! Okay. I didn't stop. do nothing! Stop! We'll figure it out! I did not do nothing! Okay. We'll he hit me in the face like okay. three times! We'll figure it He's out! He's got a lawsuit! You got a lawsuit. You fought. You cannot do that to somebody. I didn't do nothing. I did nothing. Get the medical here. Get the medical here. Right now. Right now. He busted my jaw. He busted my jaw. I didn't even move my head. I didn't do anything. Oh my God! This is not my dog. All I did was just say I'm leaving. He has, he has nothing. I didn't do nothing. And look what he just did to me. Let's give us a sec to work through no. everything, okay? He got a lawsuit, buddy. I didn't do nothing. I did not do nothing. You gotta take this one step at a time, all right? Or how are those handcuffs feeling? Did not do anything. Okay. How are those handcuffs feeling? Did not do anything. Jensen was taken to the hospital and was found to have a fractured jaw. And listen to this. Officer Jobert later requested that Jensen provide restitution to replace his pants, which had gotten torn in the scuffle, according to court documents. After this occurred, Officer Jobert went and talked to the landlord of the property, who was the guy who actually called police in the first place. And so here you can hear it firsthand what the guy had to say. Hello. Officers. I'm so sorry. Are you the, about that. the owner then? Yes. Okay. Where is Monty? Monty was in his. Yeah. He was when I got here. Gee. Oh, okay. Where did oh, he. Where, is where he inside? He, live? he lives in the back. Of so which he, one? The entrance. The entrance. Let me grab my shoes real quick. Give me two seconds. Okay. <sighs> yeah, dude. Gil sped right past me. She keeps rolling over trying to fight me. So he lives in the basement. His... Let me just talk to you first, too, before sure. we go. Yeah, talk to him again. I just want to know where we're going. His door's right there. But... Okay, so what did you see happening? So I pulled in, came home. I'll give you just a brief background and then tell you what I saw. Um, I got home. He's... He's... he's friendly for all I know like he okay. was fine with me okay. and, we've, and we've had no issue Monty's been great he's a good neighbor he's a good tenant he's he's good um, from from all accounts she provokes him uh -huh. you know if, if ever you know there's been a couple times where there's been kind of a, a dispute outdoors and she she she, she really rides him pretty hard uh -huh. um, but so she, she comes, he's made it clear, he's told me she's not welcome, and that I'm welcome to ask her to leave. He's made, he's told her that, but she comes around. And she used to come down. I brought your notepad, Sam, more. She used to come and wait. I had it. Mine's in the car. Mine's at my desk. I'm That's all right. No, I got a, uh, I got, I got some. She used to come and wait for him in his stairwell. Okay. When he got home from work. And he had no way to get her to leave. Um, and so he started locking this outdoor, outdoor door, and it goes down the stairs to another door. So, so, and so since she couldn't talk to him through the door here, 
she's been coming to his window wells okay. on the side and, and yelling at him through his window wells. And so that's where several times over the last few months, I mean, it's almost been on a weekly basis, I'll get a complaint from a neighbor because they can hear her yelling at him. And so probably three weeks ago, I came out. One time she was yelling at him down her window well, and or down his window well, and I said, hey, what, what's going on here? You know, and, and I confronted her and asked her. When was this? This was about three weeks ago. Okay. About three weeks ago. And she was very defensive and angry with me at first. And it took about five, ten minutes of her really challenging me. You know, what, what am I doing? Who's complaining? What's, you know, and I, obviously I didn't tell her the neighbor. But just said, look, you know, I, I really don't have a problem that you're here as long as you're welcome and you're civil. But when my neighbors are complaining, we have a problem. And if I have to involve the police, or you know, basically kind of warned her, right? Um, and it got better. Um, she still came around a few times after that, but she was a little quieter. But it, and then the last couple of weeks, it's I've had a few more complaints. Have so. we been here in the last couple of weeks? No, and okay. and I, I don't know. You know, that's where it, I, I've, I've tried to avoid this type of escalation because. I, I worry that she'll come back. Will you, will you get a statement from him, Ryan? Just while I'm talking <laughs> to him. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, Ryan? Yeah, that's all good. Yeah. You hear me? It's yeah. Just, so I it goes too far sometimes. Just so you know the circumstances, I had a, I had a neighbor text me again, and oh. they and I was, so I was like, I felt like I'm, I've got. We, we just want to get before. a statement from you guys separately before because yeah. things kind of oh. escalated. So. so. So, uh, do, do you have any cameras here or anything? I don't. I wish okay. I did. I, I've got a ring that I need to install. Were you watching what happened? Um, no. I saw I saw you come here, and okay. I, I almost wanted to point you around the corner. I should have. Well, yeah, it was, you, it was really weird, because looking at the map, and it says 207, a, 238, a, and then yeah. I'm like, okay, it's over it's here. It's a 650 North her. address. I heard her, yeah. and then I was like, okay, this must be where we're going. Yeah. No, things got a little out of hand, so... Um, no, I'm sorry. Okay, about that. so within, within the last three weeks, started getting worse. Text yeah. from neighbors. So then today, I just came home from. I had my kids in the van, and we just came home from my mom's house. And as I pulled it, I as I pulled around the corner here to come into my garage, she was standing there at Monty's door, mm -hmm. talking at his car to door? him at his car door. Okay. She was standing at his car door. And so my immediate thought, you know, and I, you know, this is an assumption. I, I don't know what the facts are, but was that she got him pinned in his car, and he's not getting out because he's trying to avoid confrontation. And um, was his window up or down? Up. Window okay. was up. And when was this? Like approximate time? Oh, this was like within the last probably 30 minutes like I, I called pretty okay. pretty close because as soon as I saw that I got out of the car I could hear her I could hear her through my garage door um, and before we got out of the court car I shut the garage door because the the one the garage door that I came in is the one right there where she was standing so I shut the garage door and as I'm getting my kids out I can hear her through the door I don't know if she was yelling but I could hear her pretty pre pretty uh, easily and, uh, and so we came inside and I pulled out my phone and I had a text from a neighbor saying she's back and she's got him pinned in his car. And so I was like, and I said, uh, you know, so this has been over months and I have some text history. Can I, I see that you. text and can yeah. I get that neighbor's info? Yeah. Um, so there's the text. She's back today. She's literally yelling at him while he's in his car, like trapping him. Sent a picture, so she lives upstairs. Okay, so she was probably apartment. just watching what yeah. just happened. Just yeah, so she, so she, she probably did see. So how do we get to her up the stairs can, here, or yeah, th through? And and so I said, thanks, Sydney. I'll call to report it. They're sending an officer. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> you see the text. You hear her at the see her and hear her at the window, mm -hmm. and go from there. Yep. What, what happened after that? You, did you call us or did you listen or hear anything specific? I, I or? didn't, I didn't, I, it's, it's hard because I, I try not to pry too much and I'm, I, I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, I, so I just called as okay. soon as I saw the text. So this was all, I mean, I was on the phone within, um, I was, I was on the phone within 10 minutes of arriving home. Okay. 
And to be fair to Greta, when when I was on the phone, they're like, is she, you know, is she yelling? And she wasn't really yelling at him. She seemed calm at, at that time. She's yelled at him before, and I've, uh -huh. I've witnessed it. But today, she wasn't. But obviously, clearly, she it sounds like she... Yeah, I'm not sure what got her. real upset um, after you guys showed up. But okay, let's go over this. Really, I see two issues here. One, we have the initial interaction that takes place, and the issue of whether or not this police officer can forcibly detain Greta against her will, rather than allow her to walk away. And then, secondly, in so doing, did the officer act reasonably, or did he act with excessive amounts of force, i.e., commit excessive force against Greta, um, which is indicated by the fact that he apparently broke her jaw. Let's look at issue number one first. What was the reason that this officer got called here? I didn't hear the 911 call, but we have a an extremely thorough explanation from the landlord, who appears to be sort of a Karen type, overly dramatic, who really, he did not observe Greta committing any crime. And he apparently reported to 911 dispatch that this woman was perhaps raising her voice, but did not allege, as far as I can tell, that this woman committed any, any crime at all. The officer shows up to the scene, categorizing it as a domestic situation, but nobody had alleged that anybody had been assaulted or battered, that any domestic violence had occurred. So this is one of those care and call situations where um, no crime has been alleged, but this police officer is going to forcibly detain this woman anyways. So in my opinion, there was no reasonable suspicion that could be articulated by any objectively reasonable police officer at this point that this woman could be held against her will. He didn't see any crime being committed. He wasn't told that any crime had been committed. Um, this, the, the guy who was the alleged victim did not say that any crime had been committed or did not ask for the police officer's help. When he talked to the woman, she answered his questions. She was fairly cooperative in the beginning, and she said that there was no problem. So this is uh, another situation where police officers escalate some violent situation where there was no need for them to be involved in the first place, and where it, even accidentally being called by a Karen landlord should have realized very quickly on that there was no problem, go on their way. All right, let's, and, and if that's the case, if this was an illegal detention, which he goes to walk away and he stops her, then anything that happened after that would be objectively unreasonable because he had no right to lay his hands on her or to restrict her, her freedom in any way. But let's assume that he did. Let's say, all right, reasonable suspicion is an easy standard. He had the right to detain her and investigate further. So did he act reasonably? The courts will look at the gram factors because this is somebody, this woman is not a pretrial detainee. She's not a prisoner. She's a, a free American citizen walking around and she has Fourth Amendment rights. The gram factors say that the courts will look at three factors to determine whether or not the officer acted reasonably. One, the severity of the crime at issue. Well, that's easy. There is no crime at issue. Um, it's a possible potential domestic call where no crime has been alleged at all. Um, so it would not justify very much violence under the first gram factor. Secondly, whether or not the subject was actively evading arrest or resisting. Well, she wasn't under arrest. She wasn't under arrest at all. She was attempting to evade. She was attempting to walk away, but she had every right to do that. So really this turns on the third gram factor, whether or not there was um, some immediate safety threat to the police officer or somebody else that justified violence being used in response. So here, the violence that was used was used to get this woman under control. Um, even before we get to whether or not that was excessive the way he did it, that was the purpose in what he was doing, was to get her under control, get her in handcuffs. Didn't look to me like she was attacking this police officer. She was just trying to get away. She wasn't known to have any weapons. She didn't say she had any weapons. There doesn't appear to be any big safety threat here. While she is fairly aggressive, she's just trying to get away from him. She is resisting, but again, it's not clear whether she has every right to resist and walk away due to the lack of reasonable suspicion. So even if, even if this was a good detainment and he was allowed to put her in handcuffs here, he 
in my opinion, acted excessively. And the injuries that she received, the broken jaw corroborates that. You can't quite see the punch on the video, but you can kind of see it. You see him like jerking and you see her body jolt backwards and kind of hit the ground. And immediately she says, you hit me, you hit me. And here she's doing what the cops usually do to my clients. She's being a good witness for, for herself. She's saying, you hit me. And he's not saying, I did not hit you. He's not denying it. So that's actually some great evidence that she preserved herself and it was saved on this body cam footage. So pretty clear cut to me, case of excessive force. And the fact that internal affairs called it excessive force, um, you know it was excessive. So hopefully she prevails on her lawsuit. It's too bad this police officer wasn't fired. He violated a individual's constitutional rights. He broke the jaw of a 64 year old woman. Yet, I believe he was only um, basically just got a slap on the wrist. So if you want to help the situation, spread this footage. Spread this footage and educate people about what happened to this lady. And perhaps that will help the lawsuit. Please subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. If you have video footage you want to submit, use the submission link below. You can follow me on Twitter at JohnBrianESQ, where I also post completely unrelated history stuff and also on Facebook at the John H. Bryan Attorney at Law page. Remember, our rights don't end where your fear begins. Freedom is scary. Deal with it.